Well, that went really good. Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are looking at EA's newest Star Wars game, Star Wars Squadrons. So this game lets you take control of X-Wings, TIE Fighters, and other original trilogy uh, Starfighters and engage in aerial combat online. Uh, it's very much a spiritual successor to games like 1994's TIE Fighter and the Rogue Squadron series. This game, while being able to be played on just console or PC as is, uh, it is also compatible with VR and with uh, flight stick controls. Today, uh, however, obviously I don't have any of that, so we will be looking at it just as a PlayStation game. Uh, a lot has been made out of it in VR, uh, many praising it as already one of the best VR games available, and uh, I can confirm just from playing online with people, people who are doing it in VR, they seem to love it. Um, still, the game isn't VR only, and as someone who does not have VR or flight stick controls, I wanted to review it as a standalone PlayStation experience and ask the question if the game is worth the $30 to $40 price point uh, that it's being uh, sold for. So let's get right into it. So while there's a definite learning curve with the controls um, and you'll be spinning upside down in circles a lot on your first playthrough, um, I think it becomes second nature pretty quickly. And I find just using the PlayStation controls is really fun. Uh, while there are similarities to the Starfighter Assault mode which appeared in uh, EA's Battlefront 2, uh, Squadrons definitely feels like a major step up from that. I know a lot of people um, were thinking that it would kind of just be an expansion of that. It's it, it's kind of not. It's like almost a whole separate thing. Um, you kind of have to completely sort of relearn this. In fact, it feels like such a step up. I think it might actually be hard to go back to Starfighter Assault after this. I think the most important new addition is the new lock-on feature that this game has. I think it's the addition that really makes Squadrons as fun as it is. You can still have moments where you kind of can't find action on the map, but this feature really makes it a lot easier to keep tailing a fighter or find a teammate or just get back into the fight. Um, beyond this, what I find to be really fun is, you know, find the person who killed you first in the match and then just stalk them the whole game. I mean, that's your rival now. You are going to follow them the whole game. Another way in which the gameplay really differs from Starfire Assault is that the aerial dogfights are uh, 5 versus 5 as opposed to Starfighter Assault, which has 24 players and potential for up to 40 AI players, I believe. And there is an AI mode in Squadrons, but your actual online matches will be against players and it will be in this 5v5 setting. On the topic of the multiplayer, something I really enjoyed in this game was the voice chat. Um, often in games, it feels like the voice chat is kind of not conducive to the logic of the game. You're just sort of like, you know, omnipresent talking in space. But here, it's very much like in the movies, you're talking to your squad uh, mates, just like, you know, like Luke and Wedge would be talking. So that's really cool, and it really adds to it, and you can really hear all your friends panic and stuff. At times, I wish you could also talk to the other side just to kind of banter with them, but obviously for gameplay reasons, it makes sense why they don't have that. Eject. I can hold it! Pull up! No, I'm all right. So as for the ships included, um, there are eight playable Starfighters in the game, and these are split across the two factions of the New Republic and the Empire. Uh, this game takes place uh, after Return of the Jedi, so they are the New Republic here, not the Rebellion. And uh, the classes function really similar to something you might see in a lot of shooters, for example. So you have your Fighter class, which is the TIE Fighter and the X-Wing. Your Interceptor class, these are like the really fast ones. Uh, this is the TIE Interceptor and the A-Wing, which I think that's probably my favorite class in the game. You have your bomber class, these are sort of your heavies, that's the TIE Bomber and the Y-Wing. And you have your support class, which is the TIE Reaper and the U-Wing. Um, those are actually new ships, um, both revealed in 2016's Rogue One. Uh, I feel like the U-Wing fits really well aesthetically with uh, the uh, New Republic ships. The TIE Reaper, kind of, aesthetically it looks very like it, much like it's from the sequel era. It looks like, kind of like Kylo Ren's ship, usually when I think of uh, non-TIE ships from the Empire, I think of something like Palpatine's shuttle. Um, but it is a very cool ship and has a really cool dashboard. Um, I think just the fact that both of these are included, relatively new ships, is a, uh, a really good sign that they're really embracing this new canon and, you know, they're, they're aware of what's out there. Beyond that, I think having the TIE Reaper kind of um, makes it so the Empire side isn't so samey. I personally like the TIE design. The Empire designs are my go-to. 
Um, but I think for a lot of people, the uh, Empire ships all look pretty samey. The TIE Reaper kind of mixes it up a bit. There are aesthetic upgrades you can do in this game, paint jobs and such, but the game is always in first person, so a lot of that you really won't see in game. There are some little nice tchotchkes you can have. Uh, I have this little uh, medical droid here. Look at him go! Now, usually when I'm playing flight games, I will go for third person. Uh, first person is, you know, definitely I feel like cooler. It feels cooler, but usually the field of view is sometimes pretty bad, and if everyone online is playing in third person getting a better field of view, I mean, you'll just get wrecked. Um, in this, it's a little more, more balanced in the fact that everyone is in first person, but also I had absolutely no problems with the field of view. I know in VR you can kind of move your head around to see, but even just playing on PlayStation, I uh, had no problem with the field of view. Beyond the controls, you're able to see the information right there on your dashboard, which is incredibly cool. So um, there is an option to turn off the HUD entirely, um, which I think is a really cool feature, but when you're starting out, definitely want to leave that on, I think. Um, you get controls to divert power to your shields, engines, and lasers, so things you hear in the movies, like divert power to shields. And once you get that really down strategically and also working with your astromech droid to make repairs, um, it becomes like, it's almost like driving stick compared to driving automatic. It just, you're very in it, you're moving with the controls. Um, so those are, those are really cool, and just the fact that you can see the little toggles and all that moving on the, on your dashboard is very cool. While the fundamentals of the game are incredibly strong, it is somewhat held back by the limited number of uh, modes and specifically I would say maps in the game. Beyond the story mode, which is pretty basic and you know, it sort of just kind of offers basic missions to get you acquainted with your fighter. Uh, there are only two modes besides that, which is the aforementioned dogfighting mode and then there's fleet battles, which is a battle to defeat the other team's flagship. Both are fun and offer variety, but I feel like the game is lacking in other modes even some sort of time trial thing to see which team can get the most kills. And while it's a little bit of a fantasy, I think it'd be cool to uh, actually be able to control a flagship with some friends, maybe multiple people manning it at once. I think that would be cool. But I'm also someone who has a uh, Star Destroyer on my keys, so. <laughs> Having two modes isn't necessarily the biggest issue, but it's exasperated by the fact that there are only six maps in the game uh, and they're shared between the two modes. While I haven't gotten sick of these maps yet, I do feel like it might limit the lifespan of the game if other planets are not added. It would also help to add more than just 8 ships included. I know they want to stick with uh, this post-Jedi era, which I think is really one of the most fascinating eras in Star Wars. Um, but, it, you know, even adding new ships from that era, or I don't think it would be that bad to just kind of break, you know, lore and have an online mode where you can play as you know, prequel ships, sequel ships, whatever. I think that'd be cool. EA said they have no plans to release any DLC, but perhaps they will update this at some point. There were free updates for Battlefront 2, but for the review, I don't think that's something you should count on. I think you should just assume this is what you're gonna get. Uh, and it's a bit of a shame because the fundamentals of the game are incredibly strong, but as of right now, it seems like a game that one might play nonstop for a month, and then from there on, just come back randomly when they want to feel like they're driving a uh, you know, Starfighter, um, as opposed to being a game that people are just constantly playing for years, like you see with a, a game like Battlefront. It's an issue I think that could be easily resolved though. Um, if it isn't though, it's uh, still a very fun arcade experience. Uh, it's just something different than a game with a super long lifespan that, you be that becomes like your game. And that way it's almost, how do you view video games? Do you want just something that's you know, fun, pay the price of the emission ticket and you're in a star fight and you're controlling it? Or do you want something that, you know, you're just playing for years on end? It kind of depends. I think, personally, this game, uh, it's a great arcade piece and I think, personally, uh, it is worth it for that. The final mode I want to talk about is the story mode, uh, which I have admittedly not finished, so I can't speak fully to its quality, um, but it definitely takes a backseat to the multiplayer. Uh, it has you switching between playing as the Galactic Empire and the New Republic, and again, it's in the era immediately following the destruction of the Death Star. So this is kind of the era. Uh, Battlefront 2 also, the story mode, took place in that era, and The Mandalorian takes place a little bit later in that era as well. This is the Aftermath era, um, where the Empire is um, fractured, um, has sort of fallen apart. There's still warlords and everything. It's an incredibly uh, interesting era. Um, I haven't gotten completely into the uh, story mode yet, as I said, 
but they don't so far they have not added a lot to the lore there are some really cool guest stars who are voiced by the original actors and that is awesome but it's not something obviously on the level of fallen order which is a full-out story and um, even though that game is also you know pretty short just uh, know if you're going into this you're getting it for the multiplayer you're not really getting it for the story mode it, um, you're probably not going to get as much out of it if you do that one thing I will say, and this is a personal gripe, and it's not with the game, but it's with uh, Star Wars media in general. Um, this still has those rebels that this, uh, as you're seeing this a lot now. Uh, the rebels are very kind of you know lovey dovey and like oh, we are hope, we are peace kind of thing, and it's it borders on cringy sometimes with them. You don't really have the issue with the Empire. This is not an issue with the game. It's how the you know the New Republic is portrayed. I mean, the way I see it, they're a military, they kill people, and it's kind of hard to believe that these, you know, peaceful kind of hippie people are killing people. I mean, they blew up the Death Star. Do you have any idea how many people were on the Death Star? <laughs> there are quite a few uh, references to Star Wars lore. I don't want to spoil them all here. Um, here's a pretty niche one, though, is there's a reference to the Empire on Mimban, perhaps uh, referencing the events of the film Solo, which take place there. You know, back home after the Empire invaded Mimbin, we stole an armored transport hauler full of scout walkers. When the Empire came looking for them, we just turned the walkers against them. Had a real good time. So, despite the somewhat limited modes, maps, and ships, is the game worth the price? Um, I, again, I think it depends on how you, you know, view video games. It's important to note that on launch day, this game is selling for. $20 or more less than the average $60 game. I got it for I think $34 I think on PlayStation Store it is $40. I think the fundamentals are strong. I think personally for me I like just an arcade experience for me <laughs> $30 is the price of two movie tickets where I am and I definitely got more hours out of the game than I would get watching two movies um, and I plan to play it even more. Um, so if you're a Star Wars fan or if you're even casually interested in just like, I want to drive a Starfighter sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I want to drive an X-Wing. Well, I think this game is definitely worth it. Um, hopefully more to be added later, um, but you know, no guarantee. Um, I do think even if you don't like flying games, I do like them, but I'm very casual on them. I think, I, you know, I played the Star Wars ones and I've played more Thunder and that's pretty much it. Um, maybe maybe a few others, but I'm very casual to it. I do like them, um, but I think if you have not uh, played any before, this is probably the best one to get started on. I think this is uh, definitely um, very, uh, hard, again, a learning curve on the controls, but I think it's very easy to get into. I think it's fun. You'll know the, um, even if you're a casual Star Wars fan, you know these ships. So, uh, you know, I think it is worth it. I would also say even if you played something like uh, EA's Battlefront and you didn't like Starfighter Assault, this is such a step up from that and they've really fixed a lot of the issues. I think the biggest issue in that was uh, it was sometimes so hard to find the action or just to ever even like follow someone for too long. Um, in this one, the tracking really outs that to be able to talk to people online. Great. Um, it's just such a major step up from that. I would say if you're into Star Wars and you're casually interested in you know trying out driving a starfighter this is this is the game this is i would say the best of the star wars flying games and there has been a lot of them the thing is i would say if you really are not into flight games and maybe you were planning to come for this for the story or something else um if you weren't into starfighter assault if you you're not really into flying you just wanted the story not really the game for you also i'd say if you're not really into multiplayer if you were looking for Something that was sort of a long, um, a, 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 something you'd be playing for a long time. Right now, at launch, probably not the game for you either. This is something if you like arcade fun, uh, you just want something you can hop in and out of, um, pull up, just play a few games and then maybe get off. This is perfect for that. But even uh, playing with just the six maps, I still haven't gotten sick of them yet, and I get sick of maps incredibly quickly. Personally, I don't think it's the biggest issue, but just for the online life of this game and to make sure people stay online, I think adding new maps and ships um, would be very expedient for this game. So I'm hoping for that, but even as is, I personally think, even without VR, even without the control stick, I think this game controls, the controls are fun enough, it, you really feel like you're in the ship, it's immersive enough, but I think it is definitely worth the price point. 
if you are into sort of arcade style games or if you just like Star Wars. If you like Star Wars, this is a, uh, a must get, I would say. I'm one who tends more towards the military side of Star Wars as opposed to the uh, kind of magic Jedi side. Um, so I do like that. If you're looking for lightsabers, they're not here. But if you're looking for, you know, the Empire at War, this is uh, it fighting the New Republic in its final days. So that's pretty cool and it's fun to be able to play that. Uh, anyway, this has been Manny from Rawhide Radio. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe uh, to stay up to date on all our videos. And hopefully, uh, I will see you again soon. Also, what is with this haircut? They're in the military. Shouldn't they all have the same haircut? Why do they have trendy haircuts? I mean, at least if they're going to have trendy haircuts, they should have haircuts like the 70s characters. I mean, that's the OT. They should all have 70s. Haircuts. Oh, he's got it.